This is Faith Encouraged with Father Barnabas Powell. Homilies designed to help you live a purposeful and faith-filled life in Jesus Christ. Here's Father Barnabas. May I make a confession this morning? Is that all right? I mean, is everybody ready to hear my confession? I mean, I hear yours. I hear some of yours. When I was uh, in my Protestant days, I had a fellow seminarian who had this bright idea. He said, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take acting lessons to help my preaching. I'm going to take acting lessons. It's cool. And so as he was taking these lessons, he came up to um, the section where they started teaching them that they had to learn what their motivation was. What is, your, what is my character's motivation? What's motivating my character to do or to act in this way or this, this, uh, uh, this behavior or taking this choice or making this speech? Why is he doing this? And the guy learned, and he was passing it on to me, that for actors and actresses, I guess we're not allowed to say actresses anymore. For actors, we're, that's their whole thing. They've got to know what motivates their character because unless they know what motivates their character, they can't empathize with the person that they're playing. And so, knowing your motivation is extremely important. Folks, I'm going to say something that I think, I hope I can prove in this homily, or I hope it, sound, it rings true to you. Knowing your motivation, what motivates you to do the things you do, what motivates you to act the way you act, what motivates you to say the things you say, what motivates you to go to the places that you go, to have the friends that you have, to do the work that you do at your job, what motivates you? I'll say this, it's extremely important for us to think about in our own society today what motivates our population. We've seen these past few days and since the election, in fact, for the f past 18 months or more, we've seen people's behaviors in this election season here in the United States be motivated by a million different things. I confess to you, I was very close to just simply dumping all kinds of social media this past week to the point where I was just, I, I don't like any of you people. I don't like any of you. You're all mean and hateful and mean-spirited and snarky and, 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 and smart-alecky, just like me. I thought you guys were supposed to be acting better than that. But what motivates that? What motivates all this stuff? We saw all these marches yesterday, and we saw the, uh, the, in the inauguration the other day, and we saw people that were just thrilled to death, and they were just as happy as they could be, and others who were absolutely furious and busting stuff and setting things on fire. What's the motivation for that? What motivates that kind of activity? What motivates you to be angry at your friend who disagrees with you politically? What motivates you to be angry at your, uh, your spouse or your co-workers when they do things that you don't like? What's, that, what's motivating you? Is it fear? What's motivating you? Is it, well, can't everybody tell I'm right? Is that what's motivating you? I mean, it should be kind of obvious that, for, I mean, after all, I'm right, right? If I wasn't right, I'd be wrong, and I'm never wrong. Just ask my wife. No, don't ask my wife. She'll tell you the truth. <laughs> but the challenge is, unless I drill down in my actions and in my behaviors to know my motivation, unless I take the time to learn what motivates me, to learn what moves me, to learn what causes me to act the way I act, why do you get suddenly angry when somebody cuts you off in traffic? Why do you do that? Why is that happening? Now, it's always justified when I do it, but, but why do you? What does it happen to you? The point is, why does that happen? Where are you going? What's going on that's so vitally important that unless you get there in front of this other person that just cuts you off? You see what I'm saying? If you never explore your motivations, then you'll never know why you act the way you act. And until you know why you act the way you act, you'll never know how to change your behavior. 
This is one of the reasons why even in psychology, and those of us who have ever been in therapy before, we've gone to counselors, we've, we're always being asked, well, how does that make you feel? How does that make you feel? What, what's, what are you feeling at this time? By the way, most of the time whenever I, somebody asks me that, I, I want to know, why does it matter to you? But, uh, but then that's, that's not helpful. But I've noticed that many times anger, especially in my life, is not a primary emotion. You understand that, don't you? Anger is not a primary emotion. Anger is caused by a primary emotion. Anger is motivated by something else. When you're angry, something else is going on. An unfulfilled wish, uh, uh, an, act, an act that has made you afraid, and it's coming out as anger. But whatever motivates you, that's what you need to discover. I want you to look at both of our epistle lesson and our gospel lesson today. In our epistle lesson, our precious St. Paul tells his spiritual son, Timothy, Timothy, don't let anybody despise your youth. But before he says that, he is very pointed to Timothy. Timothy, make sure you do these things, the public reading of Scripture, preaching, and teaching. Why should you do that, Timothy? Because of our faith in our Lord Jesus Christ. What motivates Timothy to do the preaching and the teaching and to read the public reading of Scripture? It is our faith in Jesus Christ. What motivates your religious behavior? Is it habit? Now, folks, gang, there's nothing wrong with habits. We need good habits. But if it always remains just habit, there's going to be some fire that is not going to be lit in my soul that keeps me going for the long run. Because how many of you have ever quit doing a good habit? You ever done that before? Yeah, for instance, just yesterday, I forgot to go to the gym. It's eight years in a row now. <laughs> if your religious faith is motivated merely by habit, and it isn't motivated by, look at what St. Paul tells Timothy to do. The public reading of Scripture, preaching and teaching, which presupposes, which automatically means that a Christian that is motivated by the proper actions is doing, is learning about their faith and becoming more and more familiar with their faith. It isn't merely a habit, though having a habit is a good thing, not a bad thing, but it can't be a habit. What motivates your faith? Is it nostalgia? Well, that's just the way we've always done it. Gang, again, nothing wrong with nostalgia. But trust me, brothers and sisters, listen to me when I say this to you. This morning, hear me, if you don't hear anything else in this homily, hear this. Nostalgia will never be strong enough to pass on a strong faith to the next generation. It will never be strong enough. Because we live in a society that is not shaped by Orthodox Christianity. You can get away with that in different countries that have an orthodox background, but we don't have an orthodox background in this country. We have to be orthodox on purpose here. We have to be orthodox because we have learned why we're orthodox. I'll never forget when I talked to a man that has been orthodox his whole life and back all the way to St. Paul. That's his family. I looked at him and I said, let me ask you a question. Had you not been born in an orthodox family, would you have become orthodox? And I said, don't answer that question, because I don't want you to embarrass yourself. But I want you to think about that question. If you hadn't have been born as an Orthodox, in an Orthodox family, would you have converted to Orthodoxy? Why? And I want you to think about that. What motivates your faith? Of course, this Sunday is the famous Sunday of Zacchaeus. And you know what that means, don't you, gang? Lent. If you throw a rock real hard, you can hit the beginning of Lent right there in the square in the face. Lent's, Lent's on us. Lent's here. It's coming. We've got to be ready. The first Sunday of preparation is this Sunday of Zacchaeus. And we know the story of Zacchaeus. In Sunday school, I heard this song every year when we'd talk about Zacchaeus. Zacchaeus was a wee little man, and a wee little man was he. He climbed up in a sycamore tree for the Lord he wanted to see. I'm not going to sing the rest of it. The point is, we know the story. Zacchaeus was a tax collector. He was one of the most hated members of his society, kind of like today. 
Zacchaeus was known in the area, but Zacchaeus was a short little fellow. And he saw that Jesus was coming. And what motivated Zacchaeus? Zacchaeus wanted to see Jesus. How bad did Zacchaeus want to see Jesus? Well, he'll show you in just a second. He throws off his pride. He throws off his stature in the community. Everybody hated him anyway. He didn't care what anybody else thought. He runs ahead of the crowd and climbs up in a tree and sits on a limb just so he can do the one thing he wants more than anything. He wants to see Jesus. And when Jesus passes that way, what does the Lord, how does the Lord reward Zacchaeus' motivation? Zacchaeus, come down out of that tree, boy. I've got to have dinner at your house this afternoon. And then, of course, we know the rest of the story. Everybody, all of the proper people in the village were upset. Why, don't you know he's going in to eat with a sinner? But again, look at what happens. Zacchaeus proves his motivation again. What does he do? In the midst of the dinner, he stands up and he says, Lord, I'm a rich man in this town. From this day forward, I'm going to give half I own to the poor right now. And if I've ever cheated anybody, I'm going to pay them back four times. What does Jesus end our passage this morning with? Today, salvation has come to this house. For this man is also a child of Abraham. What motivates you today? Why are you in church? Is it a habit? Good. Is it nostalgia? Fantastic. Please know that both of those motivations will always, 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 look at me in the face, Every one, those motivations will always be too small to carry on this faith to the next generation. Always, 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 always. What motivates your faith this morning? And are you willing to say goodbye to your pride? Are you willing to upend your life and climb the tree and see Jesus? Because if you do, he'll notice. Father Barnabas is the priest at the Saints Raphael, Nicholas, and Irene Greek Orthodox Church in Cumming, Georgia. Find out more at faithencouraged.org. That's faithencouraged.org.